Okay, so today we're going deep on something uh, pretty serious, uh, but also really fascinating, Yeah. <laughs> medically speaking. Uh, it's called pituitary apoplexy. Right. You know, you sent over some information on this, and um, I think our mission here is to really give people a solid understanding of it. Yeah. You know, like what it is, why it matters. Absolutely. Kind of like your essential briefing on this. Yeah. Relatively rare, but a uh, critical situation. Definitely. So we'll be covering everything, you know, from the definition to how it's treated. Yeah. What the long term outlook might be. Exactly. And we'll be looking at how common it is, you know, who's at higher risk. Right. Uh, the underlying mechanisms, the key signs. Yeah. How it's diagnosed and uh, the treatment strategies mm -hmm. and, you know, what recovery typically involves. OK, great. Mm -hmm. So let's jump right in. Uh, what exactly is pituitary apoplexy? Well, in simple terms, it's a sudden dangerous event. Yeah. Affecting the pituitary gland. Uh -huh. uh, it's either a sudden bleed or a blockage of blood flow. And what's really interesting is that it often occurs in someone who already has a non-cancerous growth there yeah. called a pituitary adenoma. Right. So this is considered a medical emergency because of how quickly it can become life-threatening. Yeah, that sounds pretty dramatic. It is. So how often does this actually happen and who tends to be more vulnerable to it? Well, it's uncommon, thankfully. Okay. It occurs in about 2 to 12 out of every 100 people with pituitary adenomas. I see. So, you know, having one of these adenomas really is the biggest risk factor. Right. But we also see it more often in people with high blood pressure. Okay. Those on blood thinners, uh -huh. pregnant individuals, mm. and sometimes even after medical tests that stimulate the pituitary gland. Oh, wow. So it's like yeah. a lot of different things can... It can be triggered by a variety of factors. Okay. And it's also more prevalent in men. Okay. And tends to occur in middle age. Mm. So it really highlights how a seemingly unrelated condition like high blood pressure can impact, you know, this small but vital gland. That's a good point. Yeah. It's like yeah. a domino effect almost. Exactly. So let's talk about the process itself. What actually leads to this sudden crisis? Like sure. what's happening inside the body? Well, often it's the rapid growth of a pituitary tumor. Okay. You see, the tumor can grow so quickly uh -huh. that its blood supply can't keep up. Yeah. And that leads to either a hemorrhage right. or a lack of blood flow, which causes damage to the gland. Got it. Now, triggers for this rapid growth can include sudden blood pressure changes, mm. surgeries, yeah. injuries, mm -hmm. and even the hormonal effects of certain medical tests. So it's like you're saying even going in for right. like a seemingly routine test could... Exactly. It's okay. possible. Okay. It's definitely something to be aware of. So what are the key warning signs? Well, like what should someone watch out for? There's a classic trio of symptoms that we often see. First, a sudden intense headache. Okay. And it's often described as being behind the eyes. Mm. Second, you have new vision problems, yeah. things like double vision or blind spots. Okay. And this is specifically a loss of vision in the outer sides of your vision. Interesting. So imagine looking straight ahead and you can't see things clearly on your far left and right. Right. This happens because the optic nerves actually cross near the pituitary gland. Wow. And third, there are difficulties moving the eyes. Okay. Now, other signs can include nausea, vomiting, changes in alertness. Yeah. And symptoms of sudden hormone drops, like low blood pressure. So basically, you're feeling really awful. Yeah, you're not going to feel good. Right. It's going to be pretty obvious that something is wrong. So if someone is experiencing these symptoms, how do doctors actually figure out if it's pituitary apoplexy? Well, an MRI scan is the best tool for diagnosis. Okay. Because it can clearly show bleeding or damage in the pituitary gland. Uh -huh. Now, a CT scan can be used if an MRI isn't immediately available. Mm -hmm. But blood tests are also crucial. Okay. Because they can check pituitary hormone levels in things like electrolytes. Got it. Especially sodium levels. Yeah. So it's important to rule out other serious conditions okay like bleeding in the brain or meningitis right so you want to make sure it's yeah you have to pinpoint the cause definitely to make sure you're treating the right thing so let's say it is diagnosed as pituitary apoplexy right what happens then right. what's the immediate treatment and what about long-term care well the first priority is always stabilizing the patient okay so if the pituitary disruption affects the adrenal glands mm -hmm. which produce those essential stress hormones right High-dose steroids are given right away okay. to replace those vital hormones. Got it. And then fluid and electrolyte imbalances like low sodium are carefully managed. Yeah. Now, if there are severe vision or neurological issues, neurosurgery might be needed mm -hmm. to relieve the pressure on the pituitary gland. That makes sense. 
And then long term, most people will need to take replacement hormones. Okay. And have regular checkups with hormone and eye specialists. Right. So it's like ongoing. It's definitely ongoing management. Wow. Yeah. So what can someone expect in terms of recovery? Like, right. What's the outlook? Well, how much vision recovers really depends on how quickly treatment begins. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's... Time is of the essence. So that's why walks. That's why recognizing those symptoms and getting to a doctor quickly is crucial. Right. Unfortunately, many individuals will need lifelong hormone replacement therapy. Oh, wow. But while recurrence is rare, ongoing monitoring is still really important. So it's something that you kind of have to... You have to stay on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wow. So pituitary apoplexy, it's rare, but it really shows us how even a tiny area like the pituitary gland can play this huge role in our health. Absolutely. And a sudden disruption can have some really significant consequences. It really can. And, you know, the speed of recognizing and treating the symptoms, especially for preserving sight, is so critical. Yeah, it's so important to get help quickly. It makes you think about all those other seemingly small systems in our bodies. It really does. Like what other areas might be just as vulnerable to rapid disruptions in blood supply or function? That's a great question and something to ponder. Right. It makes you realize just how intricate and delicate the human body really is. Yeah, and how much we take for granted. Exactly. Really interesting stuff. Well, thank you for taking the time to break all that down. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. And to everyone listening, stay curious and keep learning because knowledge is power. Absolutely. Until next time. Take care.